Hi, it's John Kelly, and we're back here at the Game Day Domination 2.0 course, Lesson 19. We're getting near the end of Part 3 here in this four-part course. And this lesson is about your internal conversations. In other words, the conversation you have with yourself inside your head and how that impacts your performance. Before we get started, be sure, as always, to have something to take notes down, either your sports journal or a paper and pen or pencil. Take down some notes. Again, I talk about more things than are on the screen, so please be prepared to take notes. Let's get started. In this lesson, we will cover what your internal conversation is and why it is so very powerful. We'll talk about either positive or negative internal conversation. Talk about how you can be aware of your internal conversation. How to program your internal conversation by design. So let's get started. <clears throat> what your internal conversation is and why it is so powerful. Well, first, your internal conversation is a conversation you have with yourself, and it goes on all day long. In fact, your internal conversation goes on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A lot of it happens when you're sleeping. That's your subconscious mind. Your mind still thinks thoughts while you sleep. So the conversation inside your head is going on all the time. And here's the thing. We talk about this in Game Day Domination 1.0. As human beings, we have over 50,000 unique thoughts every single day. Imagine that. Imagine being at a stadium of 50,000 people, and each of those people are a thought. Every day, you have that many unique thoughts bombarding your head and your brain. It's a lot of thoughts. And often, we're actually unaware of these thoughts that are constantly swirling inside of our head all day long. Believe it or not. And what happens is these thoughts can form patterns that really determine our feelings and our behaviors. We talked in Game Day Domination 1.0 about it all starts with your beliefs you have about yourself and as an athlete, the beliefs you have about your ability. And those beliefs through a cause and effect relationship determine how you think. And how you think determines how you feel. And as an athlete, how you feel determines how you play. So the thought patterns that form from those 50,000 unique thoughts every day are extraordinarily powerful to determine your game day performance. Not only will they, these ensuing feelings and behaviors from these thought patterns, which really is, again, your internal conversation, your internal dialogue, they will impact all parts of your life, but particularly your self-confidence. So you imagine, I mean, really your head is like turning on a tape recorder. There's constantly, there are constantly uh, an ongoing soundtrack, if you will, going inside of your head. It's like playing the radio all day long nonstop or playing, you know, your iPhone all day long and song after song after song after song. That's how it is inside of our heads. It's really a 24 hours a day, seven day a week soundtrack that really can do great things or not so great things, particularly when it comes to your self-confidence. As an athlete, your internal conversation is extremely powerful in determining your game day mindset. We talk about throughout this course the importance of being properly prepared when you step on the field or the court. So these internal conversations you have with yourself all the time become even that much more heightened, that much more critical when you are preparing to play or even while you're playing your game. The bottom line is your internal conversation will propel or it will limit your game day success. And at the bottom there, you become what you think about all day long. 
That's a powerful statement you really should write down. And I would even put it down in a post-it note and post it somewhere around your house. You become what you think about all day long. So the question then is asked, what do you think about? What are the thoughts inside of your head? What is that internal conversation? We're going to get into that more right now. Before I do, I wanted to put this up on the screen. It's a graphic which is basically blah, 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 blah. And a lot of what goes on inside of your head and all of our heads kind of sounds like blah, 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 blah. And, and so I want you to understand that uh, you do have a choice with what goes on inside your head. And as we always talk about in the Game Day Domination course, I want you to succeed by design and not by chance, not by default. And the blah, blah, blahs inside your head really is not the best strategy <laughs> to go forward and be successful on Game Day. So let's look at either positive or negative internal conversations. What would those look like? So your internal conversation can be positive or negative. Again, that conversation or the thoughts you have with yourself all day long. And they can even change from positive to negative, negative to positive several times a day and even several times during a game. Depending upon how you play, if you're not mentally tough and don't really have a good mental game plan coming into the game that you can really work on during the game, you can go on a roller coaster ride of Positive thoughts, negative thoughts. Positive thoughts, negative thoughts all game long. We don't want that to happen. That's not a great strategy for game day success. A negative or limited internal conversation can destroy your game day performance, particularly at the most pivotal moments of your game. When you need that extra burst of energy, you need that extra burst of focus, you need that extra burst of strength, and you don't have it because your mind has gone negative and that conversation can drain your body, can drain your focus, can drain your potential for game day success. Now, on the other hand, if your internal conversation is positive and limitless, it can lead to absolute game day domination because in this state, your mind and body are relaxed, your mind and body are focused, and your mind and body become confident where the other side of that coin, the negative thinking, it gets you more stressful, more tense, and we know you can't play your best when your body is not relaxed, not focused, and not confident. So negative or positive internal conversation can come from thoughts you generate about yourself or come from a situation as well as a reaction to what somebody else may say about you. So on one hand, you can generate your own thoughts, your own internal conversation, thoughts you generate. But so often, particularly as young athletes, you might react and respond to what somebody else says about you. A parent makes a comment. A coach makes a comment. A teammate makes a comment. And you take that in a way that's hurtful or a way that really impacts your confidence. And it starts that conversation in your head now to become negative, to become limiting. So it's important to recognize that this conversation is always inside your head, but it can be influenced by external comments from other people. <clears throat> the bottom line is you must take responsibility for what thoughts are inside your head. What is that conversation? And if need be, you need to reprogram your mind by design through positive and directed internal conversation. You read that one again. It's very important. You must take responsibility to reprogram your mind by design through positive and directed internal conversation. Remember, you always control the thoughts in your head. So let's get into an um, illustration here that I think, for those of you that are visual learners, will understand this. There's really three ways you can go with that internal conversation, all of which are going to impact the quality of your game day performance. Remember, the goal is always to play at the highest percent of your athletic potential on game day. Are you playing at 100%? Are you playing at 90%? Are you playing at 70%? Are you playing at 50%? And that internal conversation, again, the thoughts inside your head, 
has a huge impact on the quality of that performance and what percent of your potential you'll actually play at. So in the left in green, of course, is optimal. Okay? Your internal conversation is consistently positive. It's consistently directed towards what your goals are and what your objectives are for that game. Um, the internal conversation is absolutely first rate. And as a result, you are focused, you are driven, you have that can-do attitude that it takes to succeed on game day at a consistent level. As well, you easily overcome game day adversity because you're focusing more on the process versus the results. And in fact, you expect success. If the programming inside of your head is all about success, then why wouldn't you walk on the field of the court expecting to achieve success? And that's what that high level of positive internal conversation can deliver. In the middle and yellow, where you're kind of on the fence, you have both positive and negative internal conversation. Depending upon the play, how you feel maybe one day or the other, what somebody says to you, you can be feeling great about your game and get a lot of positives from how you think, or you can go negative. So in this mindset, in this internal conversation, uh, you're positive one minute, negative the next. It's really a roller coaster ride, and it's impossible to have consistent game day success with this kind of internal conversation and mindset. What happens is your, is your performance is inconsistent. Maybe it's great one game, bad the next, great one play or one inning or one quarter, bad the next. And it's really a play to play type mentality. You play as well as your last play versus having a stronger mindset, a stronger conversation, a stronger mental toughness where you go out there expecting success. In this mindset, you go out not sure what to expect. Now on the right, of course, the least optimal internal conversation in the pink would be that you're consistently negative. That conversation in your head is consistently negative, consistently uh, critical consistently in a you know can't do attitude uh, rather than having very directed thoughts towards your goals and objectives your thoughts are very scattered you don't really you're not really playing the game by design you're just sort of going with whatever direction the wind blows and uh, as a result you play the game with hesitancy you play the game very unconfident versus confident uh, you have a can't-do attitude. You become highly critical of every mistake that you make. And in reality, you walk on the field and the court, for the most part, expecting failure. And uh, obviously, that mentality, that mindset, that internal conversation will never produce any kind of game day success or any level of uh, consistently playing at your potential as an athlete. So it's important to look at these three different ways you can go, like a stoplight. You know, it's... Is green, yellow, or red? Well, the same way with your internal conversation, the quality of that conversation, again, the quality of your thoughts, will determine the quality of your game day performance. The impact of that is so uh, profound. So now how can you be aware of your internal conversation? As I said before, so often we're not even aware of the thoughts that are going on inside of our head. We're busy doing stuff all day. We're sleeping. We're not even aware of more sleep from a conscious level. So how can you be aware of your internal conversation because obviously if you are you know positive one minute negative the next or you're negative most of the time we need to monitor that and we need to be aware of it we want to reprogram the mind if that's where you're going and like most young athletes you're probably not going there all the time but you go there sometimes and particularly if you're playing a tough game and you're in a slump with your shooting or a slump with your hitting um, with your shot whatever that is that can start to negatively affect you. And so we want to find out how can we be aware of whether your internal conversation is green, yellow, or red. Well, the first thing you can do is you can use your sports journal to write down your thoughts. I mean, it may sound weird to you, but this is a great way to really start tracking your thoughts. And we mentioned before thought patterns because it's, chances are that you respond the same way every single time something happens to you. So if your thoughts are negative or your thoughts are uncertain, 
right? They're yellow, they're not red or they're or not green, but they're yellow. Something triggers your thoughts to go negative. A mistake in the field, your parent yells at you, your coach yells at you. Something happens that triggers those thoughts from positive now to negative. And so by writing that down after practice or after a game, uh, you're going to be able to reflect upon that and go, you know what, gosh, it really was kind of negative today. And let me figure out what caused that. Again, in everything that we think and we feel, there's always a cause to it. It's a cause and effect relationship. It doesn't just happen spontaneously. There's a reason behind it. So the more you can, I'm not saying be you know, super analytical about everything you think about, but just be aware, you know, was I positive today? Was I negative today? Was I kind of in between? And just note that down. Write that down. Any insights or thoughts you have. But it's a really good way to start monitoring, am I going negative? And you'll be surprised when you write down some of these thoughts and you start thinking about a little bit more about what your internal conversation is. You'll find yourself catching yourself during a game or during a practice. Oh, man, you know, I'm thinking negative. So it does just, it's, it's, a, it's a good exercise to increase your awareness of when you start going negative with your thought patterns. And then particularly before, during, or after a game, notice each time you criticize or you compliment yourself on your effort. I talk a lot about uh, how important it is to celebrate your successes. So recognize, you know, do you ever do you ever pat yourself on the back? Do you ever compliment yourself for any success that you have during the day? If you don't, it's a good place to start. We want to we want to recognize do we have some positive internal conversation going on, but as or more importantly, uh, recognize when you go negative when you criticize yourself. And this could be before the game even starts. I have players that play for me and have played for me in the past that don't have a good pregame routine, not hitting the ball well, and they get down on themselves before they've ever even stepped on the field. They start the game in a negative mindset. Their internal conversation is already going south. So recognize that this conversation can negatively impact your game day performance even before you step on the court or on the field, certainly during the game, and then how do you respond after the game? Oh, yeah, I didn't play well. I sucked. You know, I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I was 0 for 4, or I only scored two points, or I missed the net five times shooting the ball. Whatever that is, be aware of that. We want you to be aware, because the first step in changing how you think and reprogramming is recognizing how you currently think. If you don't think anything's wrong with your thinking, you're not going to be motivated to change it. You start to be aware and recognize some of these thought patterns, you know, when they go negative and why they go negative, you're in a much better position to kind of weed those out, eradicate those, and replace those negative thoughts and the negative conversation with more positive can-do uh, conversation. And we want to succeed by design, and to do that, we have to get the bad thoughts out and put the good thoughts in. Ask others to watch your body language, which is a great indicator of your internal conversation. Absolutely. If you're the kind of person, unfortunately, I can be that way, and I sure was when I played the game where I, I wore my emotions on my sleeve and on my uniform every time I went out on the field or the court. The man was basketball, baseball, football. You could always tell when I was not happy. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be in that place because it does uh, give the wrong impression to coaches, to um, your teammates, to your opponents, and even college or pro scouts watching you play. You want to get in the, really get in the habit of being tougher emotionally so you don't show your emotions on your sleeve so much. But part of that process is ask others, ask a teammate, ask your parents, ask a coach to watch your body language during a game. And if it's starting to look like you're going south, either during the game or after the game, you know, or home that night, hey, by the way, I noticed today that you kind of slumped your shoulders after you missed that shot. And I could tell that your internal conversation wasn't very good. So it's a way to let somebody else or other people external to you Kind of monitor that too, and uh, yeah, you know, for me, I mean, why not? If they can help you to get to where you need to be inside your head, from a positive, productive uh, standpoint, why not use people you trust to also watch you and help you as well? Uh, monitor how you feel. If you have a lot of energy and feel good during the course of your game. The chances are your internal conversation is positive. 
and supportive of your efforts and your goals and your objectives. Give a low energy. Uh, you don't feel so good. You have a hard time focusing. Um, you know, look at your internal conversation to see if it's negative or limiting. So even during the course of a game or pregame, you can make the choice to shift how you think. If you can have some triggers and things, so monitoring how you feel. Do you feel really great, positive, energetic? You're focused. You're confident. Chances are the thoughts that are inside that in your head are right where they need to be. But if you're starting to feel yourself, you know, drained of energy, and you can't focus, you don't feel good, you feel sick to your stomach, you know, you, 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 that's probably going to be an indication that your internal conversation has gone negative. Again, this is all about how to be aware of that conversation inside your head. So these are some great uh, exercises and tools you can use to do so. In the lower left there, keeping your thoughts focused on the present moment is a great way to limit negative internal conversation. We talked in the Game Day Domination 1.0 part of this course about the critical nature of playing your game in the present moment with present moment awareness. Not to be future focused or past focused, but supremely focused in the present moment. And if you are supremely focused in the present moment during your game, it'll be hard to go negative because you're going to be so focused. We don't want these thoughts bombarding our heads, uh, even even oh, you know positive ones at the point of you know in a bat or the point of a shot. You got to turn your mind off and just let the body do what it knows how to do with the muscle memory. But clearly, from a negative standpoint, uh, we don't want those negative thoughts bombarding us when we're getting in the batter's box or taking a shot. Uh, it's not really a very good strategy. So the more you can keep your thoughts focused on the now, what's the task at hand I have to do, uh, the less chance these negative thought uh, conversations will actually uh, occur. So let's talk about how to program your internal conversation by design. We talked about how to be aware of what your internal conversation is, particularly if it's negative. We want to get that negative out, replace it by positive. So how do you program that internal conversation and do it by design with a plan. Well, the first thing we want to do, we talked about before in a previous lesson about the importance of setting goals as far as your motivation and desire. Post your goals everywhere. Right? Whatever your goals are, write them down on a post-it and, and, and put them you know, by your bedside, put them in the bathroom mirror, put them on the refrigerator uh, in the kitchen. If you got a locker at school, put them inside the locker, put it on the dashboard of your car. Anywhere you can, Make them very easy for you to read and read them out loud because the interesting thing about when you, when you talk out loud to yourself, uh, that auditory part of that process makes it more believable to your brain. Just saying things inside your head quietly, that's powerful. But when you, particularly with your goals or an affirmation or anything you want to achieve, when you say it out loud again and again, that is a much stronger way to affirm that, a much stronger way for your mind to believe that. So post your goals everywhere. Read them out loud to yourself often. Develop a process mindset. We talked about this in, in uh, Game Day Domination 1.0. I want you to be focused on the process of you getting better and your effort and not solely focused on the results on the field or on the court. So much of this game is outside your control and I really want you to, to develop that process mindset where you're really focusing on the process of getting better. And part of the process of getting better once again is by making mistakes. We learn from making mistakes we back in practice the next day or the next week. We work on the things we need to work on. If you're simply focused on a results only mindset that negative conversation will be a lot easier to trigger if you immediately react to a poor at bat or a poor shot or something poor in your sport. Uh, Execution-wise, you didn't think you did well. That's a trigger point for that negative conversation to start. Where if you're focused simply on the process of doing the best that you can, of taking what you worked on in practice and implementing it during the game, knowing you're on this endless staircase to mastery of your sport, it's one step at a time and some days you take one step backwards, and that's the mindset that when you have a failure or adversity or a result below your expectations or others, 
you'll be able to process that easier. You might have a little bit of negativity, but not the point where it dominates your conversation with results-only mindset. Now, I want you to develop a specific pre-game routine. Uh, most athletes have that at the college level, the professional, the Olympic level. Very, very specific pre-game routine that allows you to relax your mind and your body and allows you to build confidence uh, as, you, as you move into uh, pre-game and into game. An opportunity for you to increase your focus level, your intensity level, but it's really there to relax yourself and by having a relaxed mind uh, your internal conversation will be more focused on the task at hand and likely turn towards uh, positive conversation. Remember, the more relaxed you are, the more focused you will be and the better you will play. The direct correlation there. I want you to develop positive trigger phrases to use during your games. A positive trigger phrase is something you can, you can say to yourself to get you back to a point of focus. It's a way to increase your confidence. It's a way to drown out negative conversation in your head. Maybe something as simple as, I'm the best. There's nobody better. I'm going to get a hit. I'm going to make this shot. I'm going to make this goal. Nobody's better. I got this. I'm the best. Short phrases that are positive and, and very empowering, but they're ones you can say again and again and again. And again, your mind can't focus on more than one thought simultaneously. So if you're feeding your mind a positive trigger phrase at the most pivotal time of your game, when you're on deck, if you're going to be a hitter, you know, when you're before you shoot the ball at the free throw line, the big free throw, before you take a penalty kick in soccer, any moment of pivotal time, you're ready to serve in a tennis uh, match uh, or hit a shot in golf, whatever that is, take a second or two to fill your mind with that positive trigger phrase, and that will drown out whatever negative conversation is going in there. So it's very important you develop one or several of these you can use, and they're very powerful, and they do work. You also can develop a singular, I call an action word, to keep yourself focused in that present moment. You start finding your mind wandering. You start finding yourself going negative, and you've got to bring it back to now. You can just say simply focus, focus, you know, come back, come on. Whatever one or two words you come up with to remind yourself to go from where your mind is somewhere, future focus or past focus, and bring it back to the now. Because again, you will never play your best in whatever sport you play if you can't focus your mind and your body at the critical moments of your game that matter. So that singular action word, come up with that and be prepared to use that to get your mind back to focus in the present moment. As we went through in great detail in a couple of lessons ago about mental imagery, use visualization and use mental imagery often. Use it to program your mind for game day success. Part of controlling that internal conversation is you decide what goes in your head. You don't just sit back and, oh, well, well these are the thoughts in my head. I can't, I can't help them. I can't, I can't do anything about it. That's simply not true. By visualizing, by definition, you're going to relax yourself more. You're going to, you're going to plant and program your mind with the, what, with the outcome you want to see. And the more you can get into this process of mental imagery and visualization, the more detailed you make it, the more you use all of your senses, and the more often you do it, that outcome in your head is going to seem more and more and more like it's already happened. So when you get to the actual game day, you're actually on the court, you're at the free throw line, you're in the batter's box, uh, you're taking that shot towards the goal, the net. You've already been there in your mind so many times, you know you're going to be successful. And that is by definition going to keep that internal conversation nothing but positive. So it's a great way to push the negative out is by doing your mental imagery training often and so you can really program your mind, paint that picture you want to see in the real world. And um, you'll find that's probably the most powerful thing you can do to really uh, maintain a positive and supportive internal conversation. And kind of a little bit more what I said before. After every game, go to your journal and write things down you did well. And write things down you can improve upon. If you always look at mistakes as an opportunity to learn 
versus, oh, I was really bad today. You know, I can't believe I was that bad. I let my teammates down, let myself down, let my parents down, let my coaches down. If you can frame the game as an opportunity to learn, and after the game, you write that down. So, when you, so again, by writing things down, it makes it more real. You can see it while you write it. It has more powerful, it's a more powerful learning mechanism for you to do. Like when you write down goals, goals that aren't written down really don't have much power. They're not tangible. If you write down your thoughts, uh, reflections of what you did well during the game, what you need to improve upon, then it's more powerful. Then you write down your game, then forget about it till the next practice day before you leave to go to practice. Okay, well, i got to work on this, this, this week. And you'll have, again, you'll be succeeding by design. You can program your mind as well through visualization by the things you want to improve upon, task specific or skill specific to your sport. And again, I want you to engage in overall positive self-talk and affirmations. You know, it doesn't do any good to beat yourself up between the ears, to criticize yourself, because we've already talked about that internal conversation going negative. Remember that diagram with the green, the yellow, and the, and the pink? You don't want to be in the pink zone. That really isn't going to be good for you. And so you need to really work on uh, positive self-talk, that conversation in your head, and affirmations. And affirmations quickly are... Something you can tell yourself, you can write it down or tell yourself that's positive. You know, I'm a great hitter. Uh, I'm the best three-point shooter in the world. Uh, I always out-dribble my opponents going towards a net. If you're a goalie, you know, nobody ever scores off me. And you can, you can use those affirmations. You can write them down, post them in your house as well, or you can just go around the house saying them all day long. And it does, you know, what it does primarily is it keeps your self-talk positive. And that's the goal of this of this lesson. So let's sort of summarize again, you know, how you program your internal conversations by design. The goal, of course, is consistent game day success and game day domination. Post your goals everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Again, you're going to get out of this what you put into it. If you are, if you are driven to be the best you can be in your sport, then you will do everything that I suggest that you do and then some. If you're not, then you won't. So post your goals. Put them everywhere. Drive your parents nuts, okay? Develop a process mindset versus a results only. Look at the process of getting better. Look at your effort and focus on that during the game, not the results. Develop a strong pregame routine. Have a routine that can make you comfortable and confident before the game. Develop positive trigger phrases. I'm the best. Nobody better. I can do this. Engage in positive self-talk with affirmations. Really going to the green side versus the versus the red side. Develop single action words to get you back to a point of focus, right? You just simply focus or come back, be here, come on, you get back in the game, whatever it takes, single or a few short words to get you back into the, to the present moment. Use mental imagery and visualization as often as you can to program your mind for positive. And write down your successes and failures as a way for you to learn and to grow. All right, let's summarize lesson 19 here, internal conversations and game performance. Remember, your internal dialogue, uh, internal conversations with yourself are extremely powerful. They're going on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These conversations can ultimately make or break your game day performance, depending upon whether that conversation is positive and limitless or negative and limiting. And at this point, I want to take a second to just have you think about a time during one of your games when you've gone negative. Look, we've all done it as athletes. We've all gone negative during the course of the game. You had a bad at bat. You weren't shooting the ball well. You made some turnovers. You had some bad passes. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't put a soccer ball in the net if it was the size of Texas. You had that kind of a day. And think about how that impacted your performance the rest of the game probably didn't make you play very well the rest of the game. So I want you to really think about firsthand when you've had a real positive mindset, you've had a positive conversation, and how that went on to have you have a really great game start to finish. And the time or times when that thinking got negative, that conversation was negative and limiting, and how that conversation as the game wore on, you started to play worse and worse, or certainly you didn't play your best. Direct correlation between the thoughts inside your head and how you're going to play on game day, based you know, predominantly on your ability to focus, your ability to relax, your ability to be confident, 
uh, as you go and do what you know how to do. And again, you have a responsibility. Nobody else does. Nobody else can really get inside your head and change your thoughts but you. If I could go inside your head and I could sweep all the bad thoughts out and put all new ones in, believe me, I would. But I can't do that. Your parents can't do it. Your coaches can't do it. You have the responsibility and you alone to monitor your internal conversations, to monitor that thought pattern that's going outside your head and choose the thoughts and the mindset you want. If you don't like how you're thinking, then change it. You know, develop a trigger phrase, you know, cut it out. You know, I'm going negative. Don't go negative. Let's go positive, okay? Believe in yourself. I'm doing a good job today. It's part of the learning process. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be fine. Something you can trigger yourself, but you have that responsibility to figure that out. I'm giving you some tools, you take them and use them or not. But ultimately, your game day performance is your responsibility, and how you prepare for game day is absolutely your responsibility. And this whole course of game day domination is about giving you the tools to prepare yourself physically and mentally to come on the court and on the field and dominate. But it's always your choice. By using goals, mental imagery, internal verbal cues, we talk about those trigger statements and, and action words, and having a process mindset, your game day success can almost be guaranteed. You do all the hard work during the week to, to refine your skills and your game. Do the work between your ears, and I guarantee you, you'll achieve game day success. So as always, remember to download the review sheet and action plan for this lesson. There are other resources on this page for this lesson. Be sure that you watch, listen, and read all of those. Uh, I hope you understand this lesson and how important your internal conversation is and uh, that you have the power to change it. Again, this is John Kelly. Thanks for listening, and we're going to move on now to lesson 20.